Hello. Um, let's start. So my name is Konstantin. Um, and I'm presenting Embark, which is a framework, a JavaScript framework for um, for DApps. I should get this straight out the way. I'm not the author of Embark. Um, the guy who built this is called Yuri Matthias, and he lives in Canada. And unfortunately, he couldn't be here, so I'm proxying for him today. So um, I'm afraid he's stuck with me. Um, <clears throat> anyway, let's let's get to it. So. Um, what is a framework for DApps? Um, it's a um, framework just like Angular or Meteor that um, supports automa automated contract deployments. Um, Embark specifically supports integration with IPFS, with Meteor, and a couple of other useful t tools. Um, it's got TDD support because testing is awesome. Um, it's quite modular in, in that sense is um, you're building pipeline, uh, build and deploy pipeline agnostic, and it's got pretty neat tools for um, multi-chain management. Um, so why? What, what is it for, right? Um, basically, so if you try and build your DAP from scratch, and by DAP I mean, you know, some application has got a bunch of contracts, some HTML, some JavaScript, some CSS, and you know, trying to build some user interface, um, you kind of um, find yourself doing the same things over and over again. So let's say you have a system of five contracts, and you want to change one of them. Uh, as soon as you do that, you need to redeploy the contract, you need to update your JavaScript references, and then if you've got dependencies between different contracts, you've got to update the references as well and redeploy those contracts and do your JavaScript bindings for those contracts again. So um, the point here is that there's certain routines which you inevitably end up doing over and over and over again. Right? And that's a clear case for automation, and Embark does just that. Um, so the, uh, the quickest and easiest way to get started is to um, Open up your terminal, type an Embark demo uh, CD into the, um, into the app directory, and you'll find something um, like that. So that's your directory structure, and Embark uses a uh, so-called COC, convention over configuration. So your contract files would naturally go into the contracts directory, your HTML and the HTML, and so on. Um, for Testing, um, so Embark uses Ethereum GS VM, which is one of the components of the Node Ethereum client. Um, as for the JavaScript side of things, um, as I said, it's kind of framework agnostic, but by default, it's Mocha. If you're a Jasmine user, well, feel free to use Jasmine. Um, so for chain management, you can, um, you can run your blockchain, which is uh, basically an integration with Geth, the Go Ethereum client. Um, you can specify which environment you want to use. You can do development, you can do staging or production. Um, you, um, as a set of commands for deploying things, for running the blockchain, for simulating the blockchain. Um, so I'm gonna show that in a second. Um, now, I'm gonna show that now. Um, um, so I've already created a demo, right? Uh, and it's, can you see that all right? Yeah. Okay. So let's fire up our simulator. Um, simulator behaves just like the blockchain; it's just a little bit faster. So. Um, um, is that large? <coughs> that large enough? Better. All right. Um, okay. So let's take a look inside our directory. So we've got. Um, let's take a look at the contract. So by um, by default, the demo comes with a very simple contract called Simple Storage. It's got a setter and a getter, and basically, uh, on set it sets some stored data, which is an integer, and on get, well, it gets it. Um, Probably the most simple contract you could think of. Um, so inside the config directory, we've got uh, a couple of configs. There's a blockchain configuration file which specifies three different environments. 
um, deep development, staging, production, um, a couple of nice things like RPC hosts and um, gas limits and so on. Um, I've also got contract uh, configuration file, which doesn't contain much, but um, I can tell you this thing is actually quite powerful and um, we're going to take a look at some of the features of the contract configuration file in a minute. Um, and we've got our test here. Um, it's a very simple test. So um, we are testing that simple storage is able to set constructor value and it can, it can set the storage value as well. Uh, we can run the test by doing embark. And I can see it's deploying the contract, it's running the test, and hooray, it's still working. It's nice. Um, and we can also run the app. So testing is all great, but what's the point of the app if you can't run it? Um, to embark run. Go to localhost 8000. Yep. So this is our app. Um, we can check that the value, so it's been initialized with value of 100. We can set that to 10, get again, and we get 10. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's carry on. So um, the configuration file that I've mentioned, right. Uh, that supports, um, so one thing it supports is initialization arguments. So in this system, we've got three different contracts. Uh, user manager my storage and my main contract. My main contract needs to be initialized with references to the first three, uh, first two contracts. And we can set that in contracts.yaml. Uh, support static binding. So let's say we don't want, we don't actually want to deploy my, the my storage contract. We just want to initialize it with, we just want to bind it to a specific address on the blockchain. That is, my storage has been already deployed. Um, and yeah, we can we can do that by uh, simply providing an address in your conf in your contracts of YAML file. Um, it supports events, so let's say on um, on deploy of my main contract, we want to um, make a call to the user user management um, user manager contract. Um, well, we can do that. We can even pass a um, an address to it, the address of my main contract. Um, you can do contract inheritance, so um, that's, yeah, that's not a problem. You can, if your USD and Euro contracts depend on the stable coin contract, then um, you, you, all you need to do is to specify that USD and Euro are instance of stable coin. Um, another nice feature of uh, Embark is that you can use IPFS. So uh, by simply installing the IPFS daemon and running Embark blockchain and Embark IPFS, you, um, it will nicely package your app and deploy it to IPFS, and that will be accessible on your local host 8080. Um, so I probably already men mentioned that it supports Meteor integration. So um, just as you would embark demo, you instead of, embark, instead of typing embark demo into your command line, just type in embark meteor demo, uh, and it creates a very similar app, but in meteor. And that's it for the demo. <laughs> um,